Welcome to inyong lahat. Good morning. Welcome to our services today. We praise the Lord for bringing us here once again. To you know, it's always a joy to be with God's people. Amen. To mayo po tayong lahat at tayo po ay may nalangin. Every every head bowed and every eye closed, and let's pray for the Lord to prepare us as we listen to His word today about humility and servanthood. Tayo po ay nalangin po na salamat po sa Magang ito, salamat Panginoon sa iyong biyaya, sa aming mga buhay, Panginoon. Tunay nga po na wala kaming kakayanan. Kung wala ka, Panginoon, we are only here because of your grace. We thank you for our anniversary celebration last week. We even thank you, O Lord, for our Lord's Supper where we commemorate the dying, the, the sufferings that you have experienced because of us. And we, we look forward to your return. And O Lord, as we look forward to your return, may you equip us so that we can occupy and that you will be pleased, O Lord, with the humility which you'll find in our hearts. All this we ask and pray in Christ's most precious name. Amen. Please take your seats. Magandang umaga po. Ang topic po natin ngayon ay humility and servanthood. And we take this from our text in the book of Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. Philippians chapter 2. Verses 1 to 10. Gusto ko po munang basahin sa inyo yung buong verse. You know, in the book of Philippians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul was actually exhorting the church at Philippi. No? Madami pong exhortation si Apostle Paul doon sa church at Philippi. Sabi niya sa verse 1, If there be any consolation, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same mind, being of one accord and of one mind. So it was an exhortation of love and unity. Na pangangailangan po ng isang simbahan, hindi ba? Sabi dito, kung, kung meron mang consolation sa Panginoon, uh, sa pag-iibig, sa fellowship of the Spirit, bowels, uh, if any bowels and mercies, sa, sa puso natin, sa pag-iibig at, at, at awa, kung, kung, kung meron man daw po ganito, magiging masaya siya kung tayo ay magiging like-minded. Parehong pag-iisip. Okay? If we will be united towards these things. Now, after that, the, the topic somehow shifted to the subject of humility and servanthood, which actually gives us a very important example of humility in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sabi po sa verse 3, Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. Alam niyo ba yung strife? Alam niyo ba yung strife? Let, let nothing be done through strife. Ano yung strife? Ang ibig sabihin po ng strife ay... <laughs> ang ibig sabihin ng strife ay parang electioneering. Or yung bang um, ginagawa mo isang bagay para mag-intrigue for an office. Ano yung ibig sabihin nun? Meron kang motibo behind what you're doing. May gusto, kang, gusto mong pumosisyon. Ayan. Katulad ng ginawa, sino yung anak ni David na nag-upo sa gate? Si Absalom? Tama, no? Yung anak ni David na umupo at the gate, he gained the favor of the people. Okay, so kapag, kapag pupunta yung mga tao doon sa hari, haharangin niya. Siya na ang mag advise siya na ang mag-take care ng concern nila. Ang purpose niya, i-usurp yung authority ng kanyang tatay. So sabi dito, let nothing be done through strife. Huwag daw tayong kikilos para lang pumosisyon or kumuha ng posisyon. Or vain glory or empty glory, groundless self of self-esteem, empty pride. But ano ang admonition sa atin? But let each esteem other better than themselves. Ibig sabihin, hindi lang daw sarilang iniisip, but you are listening to others. Lalo yung binigyan ng emphasis sa verse 4. Sabi sa verse 4, Let not every man, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Huwag ka lang daw tumingin sa iyong mga pangangailangan. But let us be mindful of the things of others. And this is, this is um, being said to a church. Ibig sabihin sa isang simbahan, lalo na kung ikaw ay may kakayahan. Meron kang authority. nag ka ng isang ministry. Meron kang kapangyarihan sa mga pwedeng gumalaw sa loob ng simbahan. Huwag ka daw tumingin sa pangangailangan mo lamang. Kundi sa pangangailangan ng iba. Hindi ba? Kailangan daw nating maging mindful sa pangangailangan ng iba. Let a look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Important, hindi ba nabahagandang exhortation ni Apostle Paul? And he goes on to say in verse number 5, and this is where we will pick up our, 
our uh, message for this morning. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus, the mind of Christ, the humility and servanthood of Christ, who being in the form of God. It is without controversy that Jesus Christ is God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. What form did he take? The form of a servant. And was made in the likeness of men. In the likeness of men. Ano pa? And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Nakita nyo ba yung unang exhortation, maikli lang, pero ito yung discussion sa humility and servanthood. Binibigyan ng emphasis ni Apostle Paul. Meron pa siyang example ng humility. Kaya napahalaga ng humility and servanthood sa isang gawain. Di po ba? Napaha napahalaga. Na, ano ba ang Tagalog ng humility? Kababaang loob. Papapakumbaba, no? Nap napakahalaga ng humility at servanthood. Paglilingkod. Yung tamang paglilingkod sa isang simbahan. Sa isang gawain na katulad natin. Napahalaga po nun. Now, humility and servanthood are very much intertwined. Ang kababaang loob at, o pagpapakumbaba at paglilingkod ay magkakabit po. Hindi yan pwedeng paghiwalayin. True servanthood, ha? Sapagat pwede ka namang, tama ba, pwede kang, pwede kang kumanta sa choir ng wala kang servant heart? Pwede po ba yon? Amen? Pwede kang magturo ng wala kang servant heart? Amen? Pwede akong magkuha-kuha dyan ng camera na wala kang servant heart? Ah, basta ako, maglalakad ako dito sa gitna, kuhaan ko kayo ng picture. Pero wala kang servant heart. Pwede ka bang magsulat ng walang servant heart? Pwede. Pwede, pwede tayong gumawa ng iba't ibang bagay ng walang tunay na puso ng paglilingkod at walang humility. Amen? Tama po ba yun? Now, sabi dito, humility and servanthood are very much intertwined. And when a minister does not exercise godly humility, the ministry is unable to realize its fullest potential. Kapag yung isang naglilingkod ay walang tunay na kapakumbabaan, Hindi din magandang epekto sa ministry. And ano pang sinabi dito? And it becomes more offensive for their own selves than edifying. Tatandaan nyo sa Ephesians chapter 4, anong sinabi doon? And God, sabi dito, binigyan tayo ng pastors, ng teachers, ng evangelists, sa Ephesians chapter 4. Ano ang purpose? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and what is the end of that? For the edifying of the body of Christ. Ibig sabihin, pag ikaw pala naglilingkod, titignan mo, hindi lang ginagawa mo. Kundi kung paano yung paglilingkod mo ay nakaka-edify. Anong edification? Building up. Nakaka-build up sa gawain ng Panginoon. Now, let's get to define what humility is. And this is a two-part message. I'll finish this this afternoon. What is humility? Humility, pag tayo kasi minsan, pag kinong ko kayo, ano ba yung humility? Baka sabihin nyo sa akin, yung tahimik lang, humble yun. Di ba? Hindi nagsasalita, lagi na kayo ko. Baka masakit ang bato, hindi humility yun. Humility is not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. Pulitin ko ha. Humility is not demeaning yourself. It's not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. Maliwanag po ba yun? It is not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. Humility is about taking away the spotlight from you Diba? Tatanggalin mo yung spotlight sa'yo without demeaning kung anong meron ka. Now, I'd, I'd like to explain that much more in uh, the rest of the message. The primary, the primary trait of humble people is that they don't think much of themselves. Nakita na ba kayo nagsasalita na puro sarili niya lang sinasabi? Lahat ng gagawin niya, lahat ng tukol sa sarili niya? That's not humility. Humility does not think of a person's self, it, it, they don't think much of themselves. Meaning they are not self-preoccupied. They are not self-preoccupied. They have better, higher, more glorious things to be occupied with. That is what true humility. This morning, the focus of the message is what humility is not. Ano ba ang hindi humility? Sapagkat so, di ba kung minsan nagkakamali tayo, akala natin pagtahimik ay humble yan. Hindi nagsasalita, walang ginagawa. Baka tamad, hindi humble. Okay? I I iba ang humble sa ibang mga bagay. Now, the first point is this. What humility is not. Humility is not concealment. Humility is not hiding. 
Ang pagiging humble po ang, o ang kapakumbabaan, pagkakaroon ng mababang loob, ay hindi pagtatago o suppression of gifts and abilities that the Lord has given you. Hindi niyo ba yon? Alam niyo, hindi pwedeng work it ha- ang, ang, ang thinking natin pag humble, yung hindi nakikita. Hindi ganun ang humility. Kasi ano ang command sa atin ng Bible sa Matthew chapter 5 verses 14 to 16? Can you open that with me? Matthew chapter 5 verses 14 to 16. Anong sinabi dito? And I'd like you to, kahit mamaya dumating, I'll read it to you now. Sabi dito, Ye are the light of the world. Di ba? Ano, saan tayo nilikin? Sa ilaw. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Hindi tayo pwedeng magtago. Di ba? Even as a humble church, we cannot hide. Amen? You know, if there is, kung may tinatago kayo dyan, gifts and abilities, meron pala kayong kakayahan. Let me tell you this, outright, being humble does not mean hiding your gift. Amen? It does not mean hiding your ability. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. Biruin mo ang dilim ng bahay, nag-brown out, nag-light ka ng kandila, tinakpan mo ng timba. Hindi, to, hindi tama, hindi ba? Ang sabi dito, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Hindi po ba? Humility is not concealment, it's not hiding. Ano ang command sa atin sa Matthew 5.16? At malamang iba sa inyo, very familiar na itong verse na ito. Anong sinabi sa Matthew 5.16? Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which art in heaven. Ibig sabihin mga kapatid, kung magiging tagapaglingkod po tayo para sa gawain ng Panginoon, hindi mo pwedeng itago kung anong meron ka. You are supposed to recognize your giftedness in Christ. Amen? Alam, ano, ano ang sinabi ng James 4.10 sa atin? James chapter 4, verse 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and He shall lift you up. Now, I, I, I remember a particular scenario when a certain servant hid the talent which he had. Natandaan niyo po ba yon? In a parable of the Lord Jesus Christ, there was a certain servant. There, there were three servants. The Lord is about to go on a journey. The first servant got five talents. Ah, eh, ten talents. Tama ba? The first servant got ten talents. The second servant got five talents. The last servant had one talent. Hindi ba? Anong ginawa noong, noong uh, servant na may sampung talento? Hindi ba't kinalakal niya yung kanyang talento? Ginamit niya? Hindi niya tinago. Yung second servant, anong ginawa niya? Hindi ba kinalakal niya din yung five talents such that when the master came back, when the master came back, the one with ten talent doubled it. The one with five talents doubled it. But the one with a single talent, what did he do? What did he do? He was so afraid, he hid the talent. Aba, naghukay, tinago. Yung talent dito ay pera. Ha? Pera ang pinag-uusapan dito. Malaking halaga. Now, tayo din po, abay, meron din tayong biyaya sa iba't ibang kaparaanan. So, balit, kung akala mo, humility yung pagtatago. Di ba? It's a misconception. That when you don't, for example, kaya mo naman talagang kumanta or kaya mo naman talagang magtuto, tinatago ko lang yung talent ko. Okay lang ako. Okay lang ako. Akala natin yun ang humility. Pero anong sinabi ng Panginoon nung dumating siya at inabutan niya yung servant na may one talent? Anong sinabi niya? Hindi lang siya basa-basa. Ah, sige, okay lang. Ayaw mo. Ano si Rabbi ng Panginoon sa Matthew 25, verse 25. Matthew chapter 25, verse 25. Can you read that for me? Ready? Go. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. Anong ginawa niya? Tinago niya. Sabi niya, ito na, ito na, Panginoon yung binigay mo. Anong sinabi ng Panginoon sa verse 26? Ready? Go. And the Lord... Anong, anong sinabi? Thou wicked and slothful servant. Sabihin, hindi lang pala, contrary to humility, yung pagtatago natin ng giftedness natin sa Panginoon, kundi masama. Masama pala. At katulad ang sinabi ko kanina, tamad, slothful, thou wicked and slothful servant, the Bible says. Masama pala yun kasi sinabi din ng Bible, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not. Kung alam mong gumawa ng tama pero hindi mo ginagawa, to him it is sin. Yan ang sabi ng Bible. 
Kahit katoliko, alam yan eh. Alam niyo ba, ang una kong natutunan yan sa, sa katikisis nung bata ako, may dalawa daw klase ng, ng kasalanan. The sin of commission and the sin of omission. Yung to him that know it to do good and do it it not, to him it is sin. Ano yun? That's the sin of omission. Yung kaya mong gawin, hindi mo ginagawa. Ano ang dahilan ng servant? Natakot. Natakot yung servant. But what does the Bible say in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7? For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You are not supposed to hide whatever you have. That's not servanthood. That's not humility. You are to recognize your giftedness in Christ. In fact, we are commanded in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. Inuutusan tayo sa 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. I'd like you to read this for me. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. Ready? Go. As every man... Amen. Sabi dito, as every man had received the gift. As every man had received the gift. Lahat daw po ay tumanggap. Even so, anong utos? Minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Humility is not concealment. Amen? Humility is not hiding your gift. It's actually about recognizing the gift which you have received from God. At ano ang command sa atin? Minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Not everyone can preach. Amen? Not everyone can sing in the choir. Niba? Not everyone can do all sorts of things, but you can do something. You can do something. And if you are truly humble, you will recognize that the Lord gave you that talent. Therefore, the Lord can use that talent for His glory. That is humility. Tinanggap ko lang to eh. You know, John 1.16 says, And of His fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. Mula sa kanyang kapuspusan, tayo ay tumanggap, and grace for grace. Anong sinabi dyan sa ibang version? One grace after another. Grace for grace. Tumanggap tayo ng biyaya, hindi na natin, hindi binigay ng Panginoon yung biyayang yan para itago. Kaya nga si Ate Chacha, magsispecial number mamayang kahapon. Kaya lang, wala siya ngayon dito. Nasaan siya? <laughs> ha? Ah, nagpa-practice, nagpa-practice na. Sinalaman ko, nag, uh, nag-aana pa na, bibijoke sa may court na buong barangay ang audience. Oh, hindi ka ma-special number dun sa... Nagsusolo pala talaga siya sa Bicol, biruin mo. Ngayon, nag, she found the humility to use the ano, gift that the Lord has given. It is not supposed to be hid. No? ba mamaya, bigla tayo mapuno dito mamaya yung hapon. <laughs> Gusto niyong marinig si Ate Chacha. Humility is not hiding. It is not concealment. Okay? Hindi mo tinatago. At ikalawa, <laughs> ikalawa ka agad. Humility is not hiding. It's not concealment. Humility is not downplaying. It is not trivializing what you can do. It is not self-deprecation. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Hindi mo ibinababa ang sarili mo. Hindi ba kung minsan tayo, ang mga Pilipino, hindi tayo sanay tumanggap ng papuri. Hindi ba? Ang galing mo naman. Hindi okay. Hindi ba? Iba sa inyo, hindi kayo napupuri. Okay. Being humble is not about exercising self-deprecation where we trivialize, undervalue, or belittle ourselves. Hindi ba? Hindi natin ibinababa ang sakili natin, kundi ano, ultimately, alam nyo kasi pag minsan, pag, al- alam nyo ba yung false humility na terminology? Di ba pag ikaw, meron nag exercise ka ng false humility, in the end, dinodraw mo din yung attention sa sarili mo eh. Di ba? Humility, it's about, sabi ko kanina, recognizing the gift of God. At yung pag-recognize nun, kasama dun ay yung pag-celebrate ng kung anong biyaya sa'yo ng Panginoon. Hindi mo dinadownplay ang biyaya sa'yo ng Panginoon. Hindi yun humility. Okay? That is not humility. Anong, anong, ano ba ang sabi ni Apostle Paul? Kasi kung si Apostle Paul ay ganito mag-claim, Ibig sabihin, mga kapatid, hindi kasalanan na i-recognize mo kung anong nagawa ng biyaya ng Panginoon sa buhay mo. Sabi ng 1 Corinthians 15.10, and I'd like you to read this for me. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. Ready? Go. Ah, 1 Corinthians 15.10. 1 Corinthians 15.10, ready? Go. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and His grace which was bestowed upon me, 
But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Mayabang ba siya dito? Kaya misinterpreted si Apostle Paul. Eh. Nakala mo, ang yabang-yabang eh. Pero anong sinasabi niya dito? I am what I am by the grace of God. He was recognizing the grace of God in his life. In fact, hindi mo siya makitang mayabang kasi iniiwan niya nga lahat ng meron siya eh. Para sa biyayan ng Panginoon eh. Hindi ba? I am what I am by the grace of God. At ano pang sinabi dito? And His grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. He was not downplaying the grace of God in His life. Anong sinabi niya? And because of that grace, I labored more abundantly than they all. Alam niyo kung may tao na parang pwedeng magmalaki sa lahat ng meron siya, it will be the Apostle Paul. You know, a lot of pastors, preachers today, many of them would claim they give up something for the Lord. But none of, very few of them would claim na ako ay lawyer, give up ko. Maraming ang pastor hindi naman ginigive up fully ang profession eh. But the Apostle Paul, he was recognizing that he is who he is not because of his profession but because of the grace of God in his life. Di ba? At hindi niya hindi nang plain. Hindi niya sinabi na, oh, dahil sa biyaya ng Panginoon, ito, nakakapag soul win, soul win, paminsan-minsan. Hindi nung sinabi ni Apostle Paul. Ang sabi ni Apostle Paul, I labored more abundantly than they all. He was celebrating the grace of God in his life. Amen? Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Kaya nga, ang paalala lamang sa atin, sabi naman natin, di ba, huwag mo namang ibaba yung biyaya ng Panginoon sa buhay mo. You celebrate that, that grace of God in your life. Nakita nga natin yung, yung special number ng mga bata sa tatalo ng Sunday. Amen? We praise God for that, right? First time din namin nagkaroon ng, ano, ang tawag doon? Ensemble sa tatalo. Wala kaming lakas ng loob <laughs> dati. So, we praise God for these these gifts and grace no, sa biyaya ng, ba- ng Panginoon sa bawat siya sa atin. Pero ito din po ang palala sa atin sa Romans chapter 12, verse 3. Pakibasa nga po ito, Romans chapter 12, verse 3. Ready? Go, for I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man, the measure of faith. Ito naman ang paalala. You don't downplay the grace of God in your life, but also, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. Diba? Doon ka lang sa tama. Diba? Hindi ka magmamalaki ng isang bagay na wala ka. Not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Amen? Ba't nyo ako pag mamapin dito, eh, di Diba? <laughs> Sino ba ako? Di ba? Not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. Alam niyo ba yung sober? Kabalik ka ng lasing. Iba sa atin, parang lasing eh. Hindi mo alam kung sino ka talaga sa harapan ng Panginoon. Not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Kung paanong binigay sa atin ng Panginoon ang kanyang biyaya. Again, Humility is not downplaying the grace of God in you. Pero don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. Think soberly. Kaya nga, uh, si Apostle Paul, alam nyo, uh, siguro ang punto nitong second, second point natin, hindi mo kailangang ibaba. Kung ito talaga ang biyaya sa'yo ng Panginoon, celebrate that giftedness. ba? Hindi mo lang nire-recognize, oh, alam ko, binigay ito sa akin ng Panginoon. But you celebrate that. And you use that to give glory to God. Amen? Paano mo bibigyan ng kapurihan ng Panginoon kung ihahide mo yung biyaya niya sa'yo? Can you think about that? How would you give glory to God if you'll always downplay the grace of God in your life? Amen? Now, sabi ni Apostle Paul sa 2 Timothy 4.7, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Because of the grace of God, kaya niyang i-claim yun. Amen? Hindi niya sinabi na hindi ko alam kung okay ba ako sa harapan ng... Do you understand what I'm pointing at? You need not downplay the grace of God in your life. Amen? Through humility is celebrating God's grace. Let nothing be done through strife and vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Ano naman punta nitong Philippians chapter 2, verse 3? Yung binasa natin kanina. Nakikita mo na ikaw may contribution ka. Nakikita mo yung contribution mo. Pero hindi mo inaalis sa isip mo na ibang tao may contribution din. 
'Di ba? Lagi niyo naririnig, lagi niyo maririnig sa akin. No one has the monopoly of wisdom. What is true humility? Humility is recognizing and celebrating the grace of God in you, but also recognizing that there is the grace of God also in other people. Amen? Kaya hindi pwedeng, uy, ako lang dito, ako lang sa si ministry ko, pag sinabi niyo sa akin na mali ginagawa ko, hindi ako makikinig. Kaya hindi ka nag improve eh. We will never improve if we're like that. Amen? True humility is recognizing also that the grace of God is present in other people. Amen? Pag sinabi sa inyo na ano ba naman yung ano, pwede bang gawin natin to? Yung minsan di tayo open sa mga ganyang bagay. But true humility means being open to the fact that the grace of God is also present in other people. Baka may tama silang pwedeng masabi na pwede mong gawin para mag-improve naman yung ginagawa natin. And when we are not humble, when we don't listen to other people, when we don't recognize the grace of God in other people, ano nangyayari? The ministry stagnates. Hindi lalago ang gawain. And you become a cause of offense. Naintindihan niyo ba yun? Nagiging cause ka ng offense. You know, as, as I am preaching this morning, I like us to look at ourselves and see, am I really humble? Am I hiding the grace of God in me? Am I self-deprecating? Or baka naman hindi ako self-deprecating. Baka naman talagang ang taas ng tingin ko sa sarili ko. Na hindi ako nakikinig sa iba. I don't recognize. Sabi dito, esteem others better than themselves. Baka naman tama yung sinasabi niya. Baka naman talaga may mali sa akin. Baka naman talaga dapat hindi ito ang ginagawa ko. Think about that. That is true humility. Sabi ko nung una, humility is not concealment. Ikalawa, humility is not is not downplaying or self-deprecating. And finally, humility is not passivity. Ano yun? Yung passive ka lang, hayaan mo lang, hindi yan humility. Baka lamang, lamang tamad pa nga than humility. Humility is not passivity. Humble people, kaya nga alam nyo, pag humble ka, hindi ibig sabihin lahat ang sasabihin mo, nice lang. Humble people don't always say nice things. Di ba? Yung, yung mga humble na taong tunay, they don't always say nice things. Hindi lang yung bagay na parang okay ang sasabihin nila. Alam niyo ang Panginoong Jesus, uh, anong sinabi niya sa mga tao na sumusunod sa kanya? Sabi niya sa Matthew 12.34, pag may mali silang ginagawa, or pag na-frustrate na- ang Panginoon, anong sinabi niya sa Matthew 12.34? Oh, generation of vipers! How can ye being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak it. Biruin mo, kung ang ha- pagiging humble, meaning lagi lang maganda sabihin mo, baka hindi humble ang Panginoong Yesus. Kasi sinabi niyo, mga ahas kayo. Di ba? Ye generation of vipers, ano sinabi? Nang John 8.44, Ye are of your father, the devil. Di lang magsalita ang Panginoong Yesus. Humility is not always about saying the nicest things. Di ba? Humility means... Actually, sometimes humility demands that we give offense for the furtherance of the gospel. Not for ourselves, but for the gospel, for the work of God. And the lust of your, your father, ye will doom. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in truth because there is no truth in him. Ye are of your father, the devil. Si Apostle Paul, anong sinabi niya? Kay Peter. Si Peter, may maling tinuturo. Anong sinabi? Napaka-forceful ng language sa Galatians 2.11. Anong sinabi ni Apostle Paul kay Peter? But when Peter was come to Antioch, I would stood him to the face. Oh, tignan mo. Napaka-strong ng language. Galatians 2.11. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I would stood him to the face because he was to be blamed. Humility is not about saying the nice things. Humility is nearer to saying the truth. Hindi ba? Galatians 3.1 O foolish Galatians. Tingnan niyo naman yung strength ng language ni Apostle Paul. Because humility is not passivity. Hindi porket walang ginagawa or, or parang passive kung ano gusto niyong gawin. Sige. That's not humility. Pero mag-observe naman daw tayo ng tama. Hindi naman porket sinabi natin na, oh tama ako. Minsan, pag tama ka, hindi ibig sabihin ni express mo yung pagiging tama mo. Para lang daanan mo lahat, sagasaan mo lahat dahil tama ka. I- maging mindful pa din po tayo. Especially, kahit na, lalo na yung mga bata. Kasi minsan naman talaga, sa totoo lang sa isang simbahan, ang mga bagong, ang mga bagong gawa, 
paggawa ng mga bagay-bagay na gagaling sa mga bata. Eh, pero itong reminder sa atin, basahin nga ng mga bata, o yung mga bata lang ha, kung bata pa kayo, pakibasa. Sa 1 Peter 5.5, pakibasa lahat ng mga bata. Ready? Go! 1 <coughs> Peter 5.5, go! Hindi ko alam kung sino mga nagbasa. <laughs> Sabi dito, Ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Pero hindi to blind obedience, ha? Anong, bakit ko sinasabi yon? Kasi sinabi dito, Yay, all of you. Kanina, sabi, yung mga bata, magbigay ka doon ng panggalang sa mga matanda. Magbigay ka ng submission sa mas matanda. Pero, yay, all of you, be subject one to another. Ibig sabihin, pwede pala na yung elder magsasubmit sa wisdom ng mas bata. Di ba? Subject. Be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisted the proud and give it grace to the humble. Humility is not passivity. Kaya tayo pong lahat, no? total lahat naman kayo nagbasa ng sinabi kong younger. Ito ang challenge sa atin ng 1 Timothy 4.12. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in worth in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. It's not passivity. It's using the grace of God in you to the fullest because it's not yours to keep. You only received that grace from God. At alam mo, pag ikaw nagsasabi ka sa ibang tao, sa loob ng simbahan, ng mga dapat gawin at tamang gawin, kung yan talaga humble, alam niyo si David, napakaganda ng kanyang disposition. Sabi niya dito, Sa Psalm 141 verse 5, Let the righteous smite me. Ayaan mo na yung, yung matuwid. Okay? Sabihan niya ako ng masama, itama niya ako. Ano pa sinabi dito? It shall be a kindness. Di ba pag, pag tayo tinatama, di ba't kabutihan yun? It shall be a kindness. Ano pa sinabi dito? And let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil which shall not break my head. For yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. Humility. Humility. Proverbs 27.6 Faithful are the ones of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. The humble may offend in order to advance the truth for the glory of God and ultimately for the good of others. If I were to recount the message which we had today, gusto kong maunawaan natin na ang humility po ay hindi maiaalis sa pagiging servant. Sinabi ko nga sa inyo eh, Pwede kang magkaroon ng posisyon. Pwede kang magkaroon ng ministry. Pero wala kang servant heart. Hindi ba? Pwede, pwede, pwede mong gawin yan. Na ginagawa mo lang yan pero may gawin, para may gawin ka. Pero wala sa puso mo ang maglingkod sa ibang tao. Pwede yan. At so sad, yan ay lumalabas sa output ng ginagawa natin. So what is a reminder today? Be humble. Humility and servanthood. And again, humility does not mean hiding kung anong kaya mong gawin. Humility does not mean deprecating yourself. Hindi mo binababa ang biyaya ng Panginoon sa buhay mo. Instead, it's about recognizing the grace of God in your life and actually celebrating that. Celebrating that. At tuling huli, humility is not passivity. It's not being passive. In fact, humility is about being proactive because you recognize that what you have, you only receive from God. Hindi naman sa'yo yan eh. So you become proactive in using that for the good, not of yourself, because humility is about taking the spotlight away from yourself, but for the good of others, for the edification of the body of Christ. Amen? So what is the call for us today? The Bible says, humble, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and He will lift you up. Tayo pong lahat ay tumayo. Tayo ay manalangin. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Tayo manalangin. And as we come to the Lord in prayer, I'd like you to ask yourself, Lord, am I really humble? Because sometimes our humility is a false humility. A kind of humility that's actually pride in disguise. At kung minsan, pag iniisip mong humble ka, pero ang focus ng ating mga desisyon ay sarili natin, that is not humility. The focus of humility is always Christ and others. 
Are you hiding? Are you in the hiding? Are you concealing your gift in Christ? That's not humility. Right now, are you, are you deprecating your giftedness in Christ? That is not humility. Are you being passive right now? That is not humility. If we really believe that we are nothing and that everything that we have is of God, then we will use this for others and for His greater glory. So perhaps the most important question I should ask you today is this. What did the Lord give you and how can you use that for the good of others and for His glory? Take this time to come to the Lord in prayer. Panginoon, salamat po sa umagang ito. Lord, just like the song says, we come before you. And I pray, O Lord, that you strip us of our pride, strip us of false humility. At talain ko, Panginoon, na bigyan mo po kami ng tunay na puso ng isang tagapaglingkod, Panginoon. One that does not hide, one that does not deprecate itself, but makes, makes much of your grace. One that looks at others and also sees the grace of God in them. And finally, O oh Lord, help us not to be passive because the last thing that you want us to do is be passive. You want us to be proactive in using the gift. You want us to steer the gift that you have given us. At nawa, Panginoon, sa paggawa po namin ito ay mas mabuti po, maging mas mabuti po kaming tagapaglingkod sa iyong gawain. Ito pong lahat ay aming dalangin sa matamis sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen and amen. Please take your seats as we listen to this special number.